Hi, this is your host Sapnil Bharatiya and we are here at Open Source Summit in Vancouver. Today we have with us once again, Cynthia Gope, uh, Chair of Software Developer Diversity and Inclusion Project. Cynthia, first of all, it's great to see you again. Yeah, thank you for having me again. The last time when we talked, it was uh, Open Mainframe Summit and we talked about neurodiversity and I'm happy to talk about this because we touched upon some uh, points like these there. Yeah. So first of all, I would like to know a bit about the origin, the history, the story of this project. Yeah, absolutely. So it was launched in July of 2021 um, and the goal of it is to get uh, working groups so employee working groups that come together and find the best practices for issues in the um, tech industry so we have three employee working groups right now which is um, neurodiversity um, the talent pipeline and then diversity inclusion and um, DEIA, so diversity, equity, inclusion, and action. And um, what we're looking at is what are the best practices? What's working and what's not working in terms of hiring people in these different groups, uh, retaining them, and making a friendly workforce? As you said, you know, the project was started and then it was relaunched. Yes. So I do want to understand uh, the importance. We do talk about diversity a lot, but mm -hmm. diversity is not just about ethnicity. It's just not about the skin right. color. It's right. a lot about things. So let's, I mean, of course, yeah. we don't have the right to define diversity, of but course. you know, just like whatever the lens we are looking at, whatever mm -hmm. your focus has been, because you're the chair of the project. Yeah. So let's talk about di diversity, how you look at it, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about what was the need that you, or the foundation felt that we need to restart mm -hmm. or relaunch this project? Yeah. Well, what we found um, in looking at what who's in our workforce, you know, uh, so females, males, you know, what what uh, nationality or or race they are, and also you know what uh, about neurodivergent status as well. So um, the project was launched in 2021, but I think there were statistics from 2020, and then we looked again in 2023. So have any of what has been being done worked? The, the numbers are basically the same. So so what whatever's been happening to recruit or retain people that are, you know, other than white males in a certain age demographic hasn't, hasn't worked. And so we want to know why. And we want to know what it is that we can do and can we create something um, for everybody to be able to look at, uh, like a template, I guess. Um, but of course, you also asked about, you know, that it's not just skin color and it's not just gender. Um, we really want to know what's best for everybody in the workplace, right? So we have to kind of assume that everybody has a special need, right? And then how can we cater to that and, and keep it the best for them? Talk a bit about when the project was relaunched mm -hmm. and when you look at, you're not looking at just technical problem, right. social problem. You also have to consider political challenge. So mm -hmm. what are the challenges that you see ahead of you? And I'm not talking about the broad challenges, but some mm -hmm. realistic ones. One realistic challenge is really a personal identity and and sa safety is not the word, but, um, you know, keeping... keeping uh, private information safe, right? So if people do disclose, how do we get them to disclose and feel safe doing that, right? Like uh, we need to protect this information. So, but we also want to collect it so that we know how to best serve the people that are working for us. And that's been extremely tricky because people don't want to share. Even if it's a, if, even if it's a questionnaire that is anonymous, it's like, why would I give you this information? What do you need it for? And and the truth is, I mean, behind the scenes, what I see the truth is, is not that we want to collect this information to use it against you. We want to collect it to use it for you. So if we know how many people are dyslexic or we know, then we're going to know what we need to tell the managers, what we need to, how we need to train the people that are supporting these individuals. If we don't know, it makes it harder to create an inclusive workforce, you know? So there's some information that would be very helpful. But, you know, if we can't share it, then we're going to do our best to create an environment that's welcoming and inclusive. But, you know, it's not easy when you don't know. 
<laughs> I also want to talk about, you know, before we share that information, sometimes we ourselves don't recognize that we belong. Right. So self-identification is also... It's huge. Yeah. Self-identification is really big. So I think that, you know, hopefully, well, I think oftentimes by the time we are adults and we are in a work environment, we know ourselves pretty well. You know, we might, we might not know why we're that way, but we might know that we need a quiet work environment, or we might know that we learn better if we're shown how to do something rather than listening to it or reading it, right? So, so there are things that we might have figured out about ourselves. And if we can share those, or if we can let our work environment know that, or as a manager or a work environment, you know, understand that people have different learning styles. Like, just look at some basic things. Like, people are going to have different learning styles. That's true whether you're neurodivergent, whether you're female, whether you come from a different country. It doesn't matter. Learning styles are innate. So let's create a work environment where we have at least that basic available, and then it doesn't matter what you are, you know, okay, you're a visual learner, you're an auditory learner, you're a kinesthetic learner. Like, that's one basic way (laughs) that we can, you know, so if we can find the bigger systems that we can provide opportunities for people to, you know, be who they are in, then it's going to matter less what we know about them. When we look at, you know, gender identity, Mm -hmm. sometimes depending on the society, because it's not a U.S. problem or it's a global problem. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of social norms. Sometimes folks, they think, hey, something is wrong with me. Right. Versus, you know, so even when when I was listening to you, even when you see some patterns out there, you don't actually know. So do you also feel that for organizations or this project is... Like, of course, you're helping organizations to help those people, mm-hmm. but how about helping those people directly where organizations, they themselves, you know, to help, you know, hey, this is what it, you feel like, maybe yeah. that's what you are. Right, right. It, it really comes down to changing the environment, you know, and that is so environment-based. I couldn't give, you know, here's your steps. Here's five things. I mean, there are general things you can do to change the environment. But you can also feel like you're doing them and, and not actually have changed anything. For, so, so, you know, it just becomes very fine work. Like, it's like, what is the manager style? What is the manager open to? What, is, what are the employees like? So, you know, a lot of it comes down to just working at a very um, almost one-on-one or systems level rather than just giving, you know, big ideas are great and those are available to a lot of people. But what does that actually mean? How does that look in practice? You know, and so being able to to coach that is what, you know, that's a lot of what I do. That's that's what's so important because you can read something, you can hear something, you can listen to something and still not really understand it. A lot of bigger organizations, they mm-hmm. also provide a lot of health care, you know, right. consultancy, you know. So do you also, because we are now looking at a large, and this is not a problem to be solved in one day. Mm-hmm. We have to change the whole way of thinking yes you know so so once again it's not just managers but a lot of infrastructure that a lot of yes. organizations provide mm-hmm. to their employees mm-hmm. through healthcare and all the consultancy do you see that you know when i look at your project that the mm-hmm. scope i feel is much bigger yes than just working with the smaller teams right it is it's much bigger i mean it needs to change top down as well as bottom up like you know it would be wonderful if we had a neurodiversity neurodivergency training mandatory for for kind of everybody in the workforce, not just the managers, but like but like everybody. Everybody needs to have access to this information. And, you know, I, that's not happening yet, to the best of my knowledge, in most places. So it does. It's like it's a big systems change, and then it's also a little systems change. You know, so so I feel like there's a lot of information out there. You know, managers can can see things and read them and be like, oh, I have information to this. But it doesn't, unless you know how to apply it, it doesn't always make sense, you know? Um, And so part of, I mean, part of the SDDI reboot, what we want to do, hopefully, is create systems where managers and employees can go to an online platform and, you know, click on, oh, I'm having... I have a question about this. How do I retain a neurodivergent employee? Or, you know, I have an employee who needs help on this aspect. Or I have a manager that doesn't understand my learning style. You know, it would be great to create a source like that. But, you know, that's that's not going to happen tomorrow. So in the meantime, what gets to happen between now and then? Just look at the project now after rebooting it mm-hmm. or restarting it or relaunching it, whatever is the correct word. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can share some of the achievements 
not on paper, but when you look and you feel mm -hmm. proud, hey, this is what we achieved. Yeah. I mean, I think basic because it, it's just relaunched. So so some things that we've achieved are we have somebody who's the chair now. So I've stepped up to be the chair. So that's great. We need that in order to get going with the rest of it. We have um, 12 volunteers that are part of the, the teams for, for building the working groups. So that's really very important. And, uh, you know, we're starting to put together a survey of what it is, like, not just who we have, but what is being done in different work systems to, you know, to achieve the goals that we want of hiring diverse employees and retaining them. So, so far, that's the, that's where we are. We're at the very beginning stage of it. Um, but we have done what we wanted to for that beginning part. You mentioned, you know, to hire diverse, you know, employ and retain them, uh, we are already seeing a lot of layoffs are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is different during, you know, COVID. It was over hiring and everything right. else is happening, but that is also becoming a challenge mm -hmm. for even hiring managers, companies to retain, and that can also play a very big role. Sometimes a lot of people stick with companies because they have good insurance there. You know, there are a lot of right. practices are very good. So, do you think that you know that can also play a very big role in the whole ecosystem where mm -hmm. you know? retaining and hiring talent is also so if there is a company yeah. who is very friendly a lot of folks would want to work in the company right. yeah absolutely i think so i mean I, I feel like we have such an untapped workforce you know in in i mean probably in in female employees neurodivergent employees like like if we can can uh become a source that feels comfortable for people to to be in then we're going to have more likelihood that we're, we have more access to employees, basically, right? So, so of course, you know, if a if an organization um, appears more friendly or accepting, then you're going to be more likely to work there. So, so what is it? What is it that those companies are doing to be friendly and, and accepting? That's that's one of the things that we want to look into. Like, oh, well, you know, Linux Foundation or Google, you know, you've had success. What have you done? What's worked? What hasn't worked? How can we do that in these other organizations? Because we don't really know. It's like we don't need to constantly reinvent the wheel. We need to see somebody that's done it correctly and understand that. Uh, once again, this may be totally unrelated. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, no, but when I sit down with you, I feel like I can talk about so many things. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it was yesterday when the White House OPM, they came out with that they will not ask, talk about the past salary and it was more about the gap in female salaries. Right. So even these kind of efforts, you know, yeah. play a very big role. And now we are seeing something which is happening was again at the federal level. Mm -hmm. Linux Foundation earlier involved got engaged with the with the with the White House about open source mm -hmm. S bombs. So do you see that there are all already, you know, kind of some openings there mm -hmm. where they can be further involvement mm -hmm. between the next, this project yes. and the public sector? Yeah, yeah, I think so. It's really exciting, right? I think there's a lot of opportunity and it and some of it is, you know, being in the right place at the right time or having the right idea or or you know, I think a lot of us are are saying the same thing over and over again, but but who's really listening or where is the opportunity there? So I think that you know nothing exists in a vacuum. All of these exist together. So the more that we can, you know, the more we can do one thing in many places, the, the better it is. One more thing, when you were talking about, you know, that, uh, and we talked about that earlier also, that we need people to empathize, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the thing is that uh, this should not be something in addition to what we do, right? you know. When you come here, I have a general courtesy, you know, to be nice, mm -hmm. you know, and give right. water. So what I'm saying is that we, just the way in, in that modern tech world, we talk about culture shift like DevOps mm -hmm. and all those things. Mm -hmm. We need it's a kind of cultural shift also. Yes, we do. The way we like talk in our family when our daughters and kids mm -hmm. are, is different than we talk. Like yes. they say, oh, male makes jokes in the office. Right. They don't make the same jokes at home with, no. with the wife and kids around. Right. So why the same male different in two different places? Right. You know. So what I'm asking you mm -hmm. is that uh, we also need cultural change. You know. We so do. It, it doesn't look like you know another tick mark in your job work right. profile. It's absolutely. So, so First of all, do you see that we need cultural change, number one? Number yes. two is, of course, a big problem. Mm -hmm. If you have some kind of small playbook mm -hmm. because you have work in the that mm -hmm. this is how we should achieve this or yeah. this should, how we should approach it. Right. Well, I think that, yes, absolutely, we need cultural shift, right? We need environmental change. We need to change the, the system. Um, and, I mean, so to take a, a slight bird walk on this one is that what we find 
is that when we have a more diverse workforce, whether that be neurodiversity, women, we have happier people that are working and they are also more productive. So that's a win-win for everybody, right? So we, we actually want that. If we think of an ecosystem, what do we have in an ecosystem that's strong and healthy? We have diversity. We don't have too many of one kind of a plant, or if we do, the, that plant starts naturally changing itself. So it's the same thing for humans. We need to have diversity in order to have a stronger structure. We need the same thing that biology needs, you know, that like biodiversity, human diversity, it's the same thing. We create strength when there's differences. And so I think, I personally think it needs to start with humanizing ourselves and understanding one another and looking more at how we are the same than how we are different. Because when we look at how we're different, we other people, oh, you're different. Oh, I'm not like that, but you are. But the truth is, is we're all human. So there's a similarity between all of us. And if we can have uh, empathy towards that and understanding towards that, then that's when we can change. But if we're just a checkbox, but there's zero empathy or understanding for the checkbox other than, oh, I checked the box, great, I did my job. But if I understand you better, if I understand something about you, if you share something about your culture and I'm like, oh, I understand what that feels like for me in my own experience, then I'm going to be more likely to, you know, be open to that or to make whatever change or adjustment. Because if I don't know, I don't know. If you're just a box on a piece of paper, I don't know anything about you. So, you know, I think it starts at a... I mean, the rules, obviously, they have to be big. We need to hire these kinds of people. We need to be sensitive to this kind of person. But when it comes down to actually changing, we have to have a growth mindset and realize that it actually brings everybody better productivity, happier people, longer, you know, retained employees. Like, it brings all the things that we want. We just have to be willing to see what that is. If you just look at, you know, next year or something like what kind of things you would love to see in SDDI mm -hmm. where you're like hey this is what we need to do so even when yeah. we come to events like that there can be a whole workshop whole yes. day workshop where you know folks can come in and then you talk about you know training or right. workshops or you know yeah. sessions I mean to begin with we need we need information so we are working like I think I said earlier on a survey we want people to fill out that survey and to share with us information that is on it, even if it feels sensitive or, you know, I mean, they're anonymous, but, you know, why would I share this information? Because we want to know who our workforce is. We want to know what's working in the workforce. And, and you know, we're also combining this with research. It's not just questions that we're asking, but it's best practice research. But by next year, what I would love to have is an understanding of what's working and how we can use that information to affect change. So, so here's what's working, we know this. Now, let's tell you about what's working so that you can make these changes also. Or, you know, hopefully in a year or two, we could have some, some resources available. Cynthia, once again, thank you so much for sitting down with me and of course, give an update on the project and also to share, you know, your, your vision and also some immediate, you know, executive plans that yes. you have in place. Uh, good luck with the survey. And thank of you. course, I would love to sit down with you again uh, once the survey is done, results are out, so that that will set tone for your, you know, next stage. Yes. So I would love to sit down with you again, but I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much.